Kia ora, welcome to the video. My name is Chels and we're gonna be making my absolute favorite soup today. And I debated whether I spend an entire video on soup because it's just a soup, but it really is darn amazing. It is brothy, it has got so much texture in it, it uses up all those old veggies that are probably in the fridge right now. I love it because it's so reminiscent of chicken noodle soups that I had as a child. I just love that. I was a very fussy kid. I was telling someone the other day, when I had pizza as a child, I would take off everything except the mushrooms and the bread. Like I would even take off the cheese. That's how fussy I was. But I love chicken noodle soup in a cup. And this is a vegan chicken-ish type version. Not only is it really delicious and comforting and warming because it's winter here in New Zealand and like we need something to get us through the days. Like let's be honest, it's, it's been raining for what feels like my entire life. Not only that, it is also amazing for weight loss. So we're going to make this epic soup because it deserves its own video and then we're going to talk about why it's great for weight loss. Because it's not just about watching a what I eat in a day video or looking at some recipe and then following it to a tea that is going to get you losing weight. It is about understanding these principles. So we're going to get into that as well. Before we get started, got my soda water um, and some lemon juice. Tried those drops. Drops that are meant to make your water taste good. They are so gross. Like, please let me know in the comments if there's some good ones out there or you like them. I really don't like the taste of stevia. I hate like diet anything. Just give me plain old lemon. Like this is this is bomb. So step number one is let's just go find all the veggies that you want to use up in the fridge because this is very modifiable to what you have and what you need to use up in your fridge. We are going to use carrots, obviously. Some celery. I'm going to be using this. Vegan sunfed chicken, same carrot. Put this out. What else do we want? We're gonna do some leeks. Get some leeks in here. That's them. Leek. very much optional because I know a lot of people do not like parsnips. Just flipped onto my nose. I love these guys. They are like a old albino carrot. They're like the granddad, the old white granddad of carrots, which doesn't actually sound that appealing when I'm thinking about it, but they're great. They kind of got a sweet taste. So if you do have your hand on some parsnips, it's winter where you live, whatever, then definitely put them in. This is the one vegetable that I peel. Don't ask me why, I just feel like it needs peeling. And we're gonna cook this in a pressure cooker, but you don't have to. I just use my pressure cooker literally as a stove because I prefer it to my stove. At this point, I do not think I need a stove because I have, or an oven, because I have a pressure cooker and an air fryer. I just use them. In case you are not someone who grew up cooking, your root vegetables are always going to take longer to cook. Parsnips, potatoes, onions, things that you pull out of the ground. So cook them first, get them started first, and then you can, you've actually got time while they're cooking to chop all your other vegetables. And you've got the space to actually do it. You do not have to cut all your vegetables and then start cooking. You can cut the first bit, put it into your whatever, start cooking it, and then move on to the next bit. This saves me so much time. So let me know in the comments if that's a revelation to you, or if you're like, duh, like everyone knows that. We're also gonna use a whole lot of these vegan chicken stocks because, well I use four, I think I will use four because we want it to taste like really chickeny, and it's not gonna get that taste any other way because we're not really putting in chicken. Okay, I wanted to share another tip that has been a life changer game changer for me um, in cooking dirty vegetables. I don't like having to um, cook with leek, or I used to not like cooking with leek because you can see there, it's really dirty. And this one, these leeks I got from the farmer's market. So I'm gonna use three, by the way. One leek is probably the equivalent of these because these are really tiny. 
but celery as well it's one of those vegetables that can often come quite dirty and what I've found is that if I actually wash or cut I should say my veggies first and then wash them once they're cut in a colander it's way easier and actually quicker as well and I don't have to get my my hands as like wet and then I don't have to dry my hands I just hate having to dry my hands and then um, like dry the vegetable because it's too wet for the knife and all that kind of jazz so give it a go it's been hugely helpful for me really you should put your hair up when you're cooking so I better be a good example and I need to get this trimmed in the back I've been thinking recently actually what if I just cut all my hair off like this length and I think if it wasn't for this channel and it wasn't for just being like a, a, a bit of a presence online I'd probably do it but let me know what you think is that is it weird obviously people do it and they love it I wish I'd done it in my 20s has anyone ever shaved all their hair off would you recommend what do you think let me know hydration break I just spilled so much sugar this was like a prop for something all that sugar just got spilled great good thing my kids aren't here okay so everyone has their own secrets to a good soup it seems to be like the best secret is do it slow and cook it slow and low I do not have time for that so I never cook soup so I'm like boil baby boil Look, let's do this let's go let's go 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 so my biggest tip is if you're not going to do the patience route then always salt your veggies or flavor them as they're cooking reason for this is that especially if you don't blend your soup so this is for chunky soups non-blended soups when you bite into a vegetable you want it to have some flavor in there and if you only salt it and season it after the vegetables are cooked the broth is going to have flavoring but the veggies themselves are not so i put those four uh chicken stock cubes in and that's what's seasoning my veggies now they're pretty much like sweating and cooking i like to cook them and sweat them for a bit with some kind of salt or like a stock or something like that um, until they're nearly cooked and then i'll add water and any quicker cooking ingredients let's take a look Woof, baby it's looking good you see that beautiful beautiful i'm gonna put in a ton of water now it's like one liter two liters now we're going to do about a half to a whole cup of orzo pasta orzo pasta is basically just pasta that likes to identify as rice because it is thin and small and it is amazing in soups like game changer in soups in she goes they sorry look at this this looks so good already yes, yes, yes. just a pinch of turmeric maybe two just for color nothing else just make it look pretty when it's cooked oh yes let you cook for a little bit I'm going to be using this this is a new New Zealand product that I actually really like I'm not sponsored by them or anything I just I really like the initiative they are trying to make uh, plant-based products that are actually good for people um, and this is made of lentils so the ingredients this is made of water pea protein it does have some olive oil in it um, yeast extract and then New Zealand pumpkin is what gives it or like squash I guess you'd say in other places is what gives it its uh, color it does like I said it does have a little bit of oil this serves about three people um, and so I'm gonna put the whole pack in and because this soup serves about six the calories per person for serving three servings are 235 calories so when you think about the serving six like you really only be like 115 150 calories um, in a serving and I don't think that's bad at all I think it's worth it 
for that like those few little tiny pieces of kind of chicken and this is what it looks like so part of the reason that i do like this product is that their whole goal is to have very minimal ingredients like a lot of vegan products uh, like highly processed products have a whole like list of ingredients like miles long this has one one two three four five six like six ingredients um, and so they don't try and make it look like chicken as you can see like it looks kind of gross but it's really good so if you're somewhere where you can't get hold of the sun fed chicken um this sounds it really sounds like i'm like promoting a product i'm really not but if you can't get hold of that then you can use some kind of other like a vegan chicken alternative like using just a really really small amount it'll go really far um try and find one that's like low oil like this one is and if not if you don't want to have any processed like meat alternatives then either do some kind of like chickpeas would be great in this um, or you could do potatoes i would recommend putting some kind of legume in though because that's going to be a better for you meal because it does actually include some kind of legume sauce and this is made of peas we're going to cook this up on the pan heat them up so for this i do use like one spray of rice bran oil like i told you this is <laughs> I don't want to burn myself. This is honestly the reason that people are asking me for this recipe on Instagram. I was like, I don't know if I want to show it because I'm going to use like a spray of this and that vegan chicken is processed and it has oil. But here's the thing is that because I'm using a ton of vegetables and a small amount, it's still going to be a super low calorie, comforting, do, do not burn yourself, Charles, <laughs> comforting, delicious meal. And in some ways I'm like, that's the thing that I want to get across, is that you do not have to be perfect and never eat comfort foods if you want to lose weight. You just have to be smart about it, lower the overall calories. So one spray, chill. Just got to kind of, it comes in these big chunks. Like that, I just want to break it up a little bit. So that's just gonna brown for a second. Let's check in our soup. Oh baby. Okay, so this is another reason that I don't do simmer because this is simmer. This is simmering. Like, dude, this is not a simmer. I don't know if you know a pot, but this is not a simmer. Uh, it just does it has like one heat, which is hot, really hot. But that's looking great, so we're gonna move on to the next step and put in our greens. And I've got this beautiful parsley up here, which I'm gonna put in. Me some curly kale. So we want to just check that the orzo is cooked. Mm. Orzo is pretty much cooked. Mm -mm. Okay. Alright, so I just cooked up this. You can see there's just a little bit of crunchiness to it. So I'm going to put that in. Ooh. In we go. In we go. Beautiful. Let that sit for a sec. Alright, so now I want to put my parsley in. This is not an ideal situation with one hand. I want lots and lots of parsley in there. Alright, so a couple of things here is put as much water as you want. I like a really brothy soup. So I, I typically end up adding a bit more water afterwards. The other thing you're going to want to do is season to taste. Because some people like things really salty, um, some people don't. You obviously want to put your pepper in a lot. Okay, 
going to give this a taste test. Oh my goodness, that lighting is terrible. It looks so good though. And I'm gonna get a little bit of hummus. I love having hummus on soup. Get some kale and pepper in there. With the chili. Oh, I got some chili. <laughs> that is so amazing. And Nick and I just like, we love this soup. Oh, it's my favorite soup. You, you're like kind of in the video. I'm but kind of, but not. I like it perfect. too. This is like our favorite soup. And our kids are always like, why are we having this again? But we just love it. Okay, I'm going to give you a taste. I love the parsnip in there. It kind of gives it a bit of sweetness. And then you tell me what you think. Can you give me a taste? Do you want to try it? <laughs> mm. That's nice. Mm. Good? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty darn good. And it's like an amazing way to eat so many veggies. Mm. Yum. So that soup is awesome and let me know in the comments if you're going to give it a try and what you think. I wanted to share with you though why soup is such an amazing thing to eat when you're trying to lose weight. And there's really three key principles that have helped me to lose the 40 pounds that I have and keep them off. And I used so many soups when I was starting my weight loss journey for this reason. I'm going to do a really deep dive into what these three principles are in another video. But the first one is water content. When you're thinking about how to lower your overall calories, which is really how do you lose weight by getting into a calorie deficit, then something like a vegetable filled soup is going to be able to be very, very low in calories while also being really filling because water doesn't have any calories in it. It's just water. And you may have heard this word calorie density before, which really just means the amount of calories in a given weight of food. And the biggest influencer of how calorie dense a food is, whether it is really high in calories, something like oil, which is 4,000 calories per pound, or something like vegetables, which are really low in calories at about 100 calories per pound. The biggest influencer is water. Water content of, of the food beats hands down every other thing that is going to influence calorie density. So the more water rich foods that you eat, the lower the overall calorie density. So when you're adding in a ton of veggies in there, you're hitting those two things. You're adding soup, we are adding water, not you're not adding soup to soup, but you're adding water to soup and you're adding vegetables. When you think about processing food, taking out the water is one of the biggest reasons that it becomes more calorie dense. So if you think about sugar beets, for example, which is where a lot of sugar comes from, they kind of look like a smaller, well, not smaller, but a fatter, rounder version of a parsnip. They're white. Crazy, right? Not all sugar actually comes from sugar cane. It comes from these beets. And so what happens is you take the whole beet and you process it down. You take out the water, you take out the fiber, and you're left with this kind of crystalline uh, substance, which is what we know of as sugar. Well, I don't have sugar beets on hand, but I do have parsnips. I weighed out about five parsnips, which is about 490 grams. So over a pound of food, it's about 350 calories. 490 grams, that's a significant amount of food. If we look at what that is in terms of calories for sugar, for 350 calories, that's only 90 grams of sugar. So you're having three and a half times more food when you're eating the whole version of something than when it is processed without the sugar. And there's the reason for this is also fiber, but a lot of that is simply because there's just less water in there. And this is a really easy way of knowing whether something is going to be better or worse for weight loss. It's just asking the question, is it water rich? Has it had any water removed? And if it has, then choose the thing that has had less water removed or is naturally water, watery like vegetables, fruit, uh, whole grains that are cooked with water, legumes cooked with water, potatoes, all of those kind of foods. They're naturally low in calories. Another benefit of soups is just how easy it is to get lots of different types of vegetables in. I'm not someone who is going to eat a huge bunch of kale or some celery on its own, but in a soup, I love it and I froth over it. It's also a great way to use up veggies that are getting a bit old. I don't know about you, but my celery normally goes well tree in the fridge. I don't get to it quick enough. 
And so being able to chuck those things in a soup means that I don't have as much wastage. And at the very beginning of my weight loss journey, you can see a picture of me here. This is like day one. I started something called the potato reset. I was made this kind of veggie stew. And I used a lot of stews and soups at that point because it really helped my cravings because I could eat huge volumes. I could eat huge portions of soup and stew and feel really, really full and satisfied, which would mean it was way less likely for me to go and eat ice cream or have a binge or cookies or reach for foods that I was trying to build habits around avoiding. So being able to stuff myself, go back for seconds, have comfort meals that I really loved had a twofold benefit. Not only was the food itself lowering calories, which means that I was losing weight from being in a calorie deficit it also really influenced my ha behavior in a positive way and still does to this day because i still eat a ton of them by minimizing my cravings and meaning that i was reaching less for those high calorie foods which again lowers my overall calories and when it comes to weight loss that's all you need to do is lower those calories to the point where you're in a calorie deficit so that you can start dipping into those stored fat cells and that's how all weight loss works the cool thing about this is it's just a really easy way to do it because you can eat more while still lowering those calories down. And I'm going to do a deep dive into what these other three principles are and give you some analogies and some examples, but that's coming in another video. If you want to see that, please let me know in the comments and what you'd want to see covered. And I will see you next week for another video. Go make the soup. Go have a lovely, warm, comforting meal. I know it's summer for most of the world that's watching this, but that is what it is here. And I... I'm gonna go and get some seconds. All right, bye. And I'm gonna share with you five calorie hacks that I consistently have used that have helped me to lose 40 pounds while actually eating more food than I ever did before. An entire Domino's pizza, it's nearly 1,600 calories. It'll send me on a bench for sure.